Welcome to Beware the Scare, my name is Tyler Style and today we're going to be looking at Saw 4. Saw 4 was directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman and it is a movie where a lot happens. So this video is going to be a little longer than the other ones as I explain everything going on. So make sure you're paying attention or you could miss something important. Now let's get to the movie. We start off the movie with the autopsy of John motherfucking Kramer. We see John's, well, Johnson, and can we please cover that up? Oh, thanks. They cut through his skull to pull out his brain, and then they open up his chest to pull out his stomach. They cut into his stomach and find a tape. This body cast of Tobin Bell, the man who plays John, actually took two weeks to create. They call the tape into homicide, and Mark Hoffman comes to see what it is. He plays the tape, and it basically says that the games aren't over, and they've actually just begun. Well, turns out he's right, because we go to a new game, starring Trevor, whose eyes are sewn shut, and Art, whose mouth is sewn shut. They are in a trap where they are attached to a device by chains on their necks. The slack on the chains tighten as they get pulled towards the device. They can get out of the trap by getting the key from the other person, but they can't really communicate. The trap starts and Trevor starts swinging a hook wildly. Art uses his advantage of sight to hit Trevor in the back, but Trevor finds Art and stabs him in the leg with the hook. Art rips the hook out and stabs Trevor. He grabs the key from the back of Trevor's neck and Trevor starts fighting him again. Trevor tries to hit Art with a hatchet looking thing and Art uses the chain to stop the attack and kicks him in the face. Trevor's head falls onto the device and Art starts cracking him with a hammer. Art gets out of the trap and screams, leading us to the title card. We go to Rig and his team who are in a booby-trapped building. They use a robot to make sure there are no traps waiting for them and the machine's camera sees Carrie, the detectives whose ribs got ripped open in Saw 3. Rig sprints through the door to see if she's still alive, which we already know she's not. Hoffman tells them never to go through an unsecured door. You know never to go through an unsecured door, ever. Sasha is still alive. Hoffman is greeted by two detectives, Agent Lindsay Perez and Peter Strom. They figure out that Amanda couldn't have done this by herself because Carrie weighed too much for Amanda to get her up there alone, and they assume that there's another accomplice. We go back to Rig who is watching Jill Tuck in an interrogation video. Jill Tuck is John's ex-wife and she's the woman John saw when he was getting surgery in Saw 3. Rig thinks that Eric Matthews is still alive, but Hoffman tells him it's unlikely and that he should take a few vacation days off. As Rig leaves, Strom and Perez talk about a company John used to own as well as Carrie's last text before she died, saying two officers might be in danger. Hoffman walks in with a stuffed animal and asks if any progress has been made. Rig is at home and he sees someone turn on a light in the hallway. He thinks it's his wife and walks out calling her. But we know it's not her, but instead, say it with me. Three, two, one. Mr. Piggy! We go to Hoffman who is still holding that stuffed animal and he puts an envelope in a drawer just to get kidnapped too. Rig wakes up in his bathroom and opens the door, triggering a video to start playing. The video shows that Eric Matthews is still alive and Hoffman is with him. They are both trapped and Eric is standing on a block of ice. He has 90 minutes until the ice melts. The tape finishes off with this line. Heed my warning, Officer Rig. Their lives hang in the balance of your obsession. Will you learn how to let go and truly save them? The choice is yours. The 90 minute timer starts and Rig finds a woman in a device in his living room. She's wearing a pig mask and when he takes it off we see it's a woman named Brenda. Another video starts and it tells Rig that Brenda is a criminal and he tells him not to save her. The device starts and it starts pulling her hair back. After the machine pulls her hair too much, Rig decides to shoot the machine with his gun to get it to stop. The machine does, but only for a second as it starts back up. He needs to find a combination to get her out and figures out it's on the device. As it pulls her hair, the wheel will turn and show the numbers. We go to Detective Fisk. Perez gives him a fingerprint analysis sheet and it shows that there was a bullet casing found at a crime scene with Rig's fingerprint on it. Speaking about Rig, he's still trying to get Brenda out and finally gets the combination. He gets her out of the trap and runs into his kitchen. When he comes back, he gets attacked by her. She tries to slice him with a knife, but he dodges all of the swings. He grabs her and throws her into a mirror, leading us to a really cool transition. That's one thing I enjoyed about this movie, the transitions are really creative. Another detective tells Fisk, Perez, and Strom that there were shots fired at Riggs' apartment. Rig plays a tape recorder that was attached to Brenda's hand. It says that Brenda has to kill the officer that comes to save her or else he will arrest her. Rig finds a hotel room key and another key and runs out the door. We go to Eric Matthews in Hoffman's location. It shows what happened to Eric after Saw 2. Someone locked him in a room for six months. The person gave Eric the proper equipment to heal his injury and would give him food. 
Eric started going crazy and even started petting rats. The detectives break into Rig's house looking for him, but he's already long gone. The detectives are starting to think that Rig could possibly be the new Jigsaw, and they notice that one of the pictures in the house doesn't add up and it's John's ex-wife, Jill. We go back to Eric and Hoffman and they see a man who's facilitating the game. We also see that Hoffman's chair is over a puddle of water that would electrocute him if he got put in it. Rig gets to the motel he got the key for and doesn't get 5 star service. The fuck are you looking at? Huh? He walks into the hotel room and finds a box with some black hair coming out of it. There's a picture of Rig's wife, Tracy, on the box, and when he opens it, it's not Tracy's head, but instead Mr. Piggy's. There's also a tape recorder and he plays it. Rig needs to get Ivan, who is the man at the front desk, and get him in the hotel room. He does so by getting the man's dog upstairs. The dog is actually director Darren Lynn Bowsman's dog named Chance. When Ivan finds his dog and Mr. Piggy's mask on the floor, Rig forces him into the room. The detectives start interrogating Jill and ask her what her face is doing at the crime scene. They talk about the catchphrase, cherish your life, and it's the motto of Jill's clinic. We go to a flashback where a man named Cecil and another man get into a fight. Cecil tries to pull out a switchblade, but John tells him to leave. Another flashback shows John's workshop where he built a crib and a smaller version of Billy. Back to Rig and Ivan who are in the hotel room, and Rig forces him into the second room. Turns out Ivan was a sex offender who did some fucking awful things. Rig forces Ivan to get into the trap himself and all of his limbs and head get connected to the trap. And he has the choice to either be blind or lose all of his limbs. He takes out one of his eyes but doesn't take out the other until it's too late and all of his limbs get ripped off. Rig finds out the next place to go and it's a school where Rig figured out that one of the students was being abused by her dad. The dad touched Rig's shoulder and Rig just clocked him. Back to Jill Tuck's investigation and I told you guys there's so much going on in this movie. She's talking about her unborn son Gideon. We go to a flashback and Jill is closing up the clinic. Cecil bangs on the door for her to get his jacket and when she opens the door he attacks her. He takes her keys to steal some drugs and when he runs out of the clinic he opens the door on Jill's stomach causing a miscarriage. The detectives are at the hotel room and they believe that Rig is being recruited to be the new Jigsaw killer. They learn that the hotel room was rented by a man named Art Blank. They figure out one of Art's properties and goes to the location. When they get there, they are greeted with a surveillance camera and we go back to Eric and Hoffman. Eric decides he's had enough of this shit and jumps off the ice block. The man facilitating the game puts him back on it and tells him that if he gets off the block again, Hoffman will die. Hoffman looks at the man and recognizes him from the school incident with Rig. The man was a lawyer and Hoffman told him that the man attacked Rig first, which wasn't true. Rig is back at the school and he finds the two parents accused of hurting the girl. They are in a trap and have metal rods attached to both of them, and the wife has to pull them out of both of them in order to live. The rods are in okay places for her, but the rods are in major arteries for him, so he's gonna die if she pulls them out. She does exactly that and kills him. Rig helps her pull out the last rod and finds a picture of his wife. On the back of the photo it tells him to go home. The G on the word go is in a different font, and he recognizes it as the G from the Gideon building. He leaves and pulls the fire alarm while walking out. Perez and Strom are at the game at the school and they figure out that Art Blank is the lawyer for all of the people in Riggs' game and he has gotten them all off of the crimes they've committed. And he is also Jill Tuck's lawyer. As someone is dusting for fingerprints, they trigger a crossbow that strikes someone right in the face. Perez and Strom are outside of the room now and they walk down the hallway. They find another room with good old Billy sitting in the middle with candles around him. Perez plays the tape on him and it says that Perez's next move is critical. Prez hears something coming from inside Billy, and when she gets close to it, she gets blasted. And we get to hear Billy's signature sound again. <laughs> Eric falls asleep and Art tries to wake him up. And when Art gets close to him, Eric attacks him. This is the third time in the four Saw movies where somebody has played dead or unconscious to attack someone. Art says that Eric doesn't have to worry about him and recommends staying alive until the clock hits zero. Art is part of the game too and he isn't the one doing this to them, kind of like Zepp in the first movie. Art hands Eric a gun and says he can do whatever he wants with it. Strom is screaming at Jill and asks what happened between John and Art Blank. There's another flashback and we see Jill and Art walk into John's new office space. Art is telling John that he can't walk away from designing a low income apartment complex because 40 parents are waiting to move into it, but John doesn't care. Get the fuck out of here. Who, who are you talking to? Like, that's me, John. Do you hear what I said? After John's car accident that we learned and saw too, 
Joe said that he came out a different man. She went to his office to find pictures of Cecil and a box under a sheet. Jill asked what happened to Cecil and we get to see what happened. John kidnapped him while at a Chinese festival and put him in a trap. John put a device over Cecil's head and Cecil has to push his head through eight knives and if he pushes hard enough he will be released. Cecil does so and attacks John, but John sidesteps around Cecil and he falls into a bunch of razor wire. After Jill leaves his office, John removes the sheet over the box and we see a glass box underneath. That's kind of underwhelming. Rig gets to the Gideon building and Art notices that there are two blocks of ice that are hanging from the ceiling. When Rig opens the door, the blocks of ice will fall and crush Eric. Strom gets to the Gideon building as well and starts searching. As this happens, we learn that Art Blank is actually the survivor from the trap in the beginning of the movie. As Strom is walking through the hallway, we see Jeff. What the fuck? This isn't Saw 3. This is where we learn that Saw 3 and Saw 4 are happening at the exact same time on the timeline. Art pulls out a button that he can press when the timer is up to release them. Strom listens to Jeff kill John and Rig is sprinting to the door. With only a couple seconds left, Rig gets to the door and Eric uses his gun to shoot Rig, trying to stop him. Rig opens the door and shoots Art. As this happens, the ice blocks fall from the ceiling and crush Eric's head. The collision causes Rig to fall back and Hoffman's chair goes into the electrified water. As this happens, Strom opens the door to the room John was killed in and Jeff tries shooting Strom. But Jeff dies as Strom is quicker on the trigger. We go back to Rig who kills Art because Art reaches into his bag to pull out something. That something is a tape recorder and it says that Rig was supposed to not save them in under 90 minutes. And if he didn't save them, they all would have lived. But as the tape ends, we see Hoffman stand over Rig. We learn that Hoffman is one of Jigsaw's accomplices and walks out of the room as Rig bleeds out. He closes the door on Strom, locking him in, and we end the movie as Strom gets trapped in the room that Jigsaw was murdered in. Saw 4 came out in 2007 and was the start to the new accomplice, Mark Hoffman. How will he continue John's work? I guess we'll figure out in Saw 5. I'm sorry that this video was longer than my 10 minute movies suggests, but there was just so much going on. If you haven't seen Saw 4, go watch it. My videos I try to keep as close to 10 minutes as possible, even though that didn't really happen this movie, but I typically try to and that means I take things out. So there's some things you missed, but you get the gist. My name is Tyler Style, and this has been Beware the Scare. Thanks for watching my video on Saw 4. What was your favorite part of the entire movie? Let me know in the comments below. Writing this script was so hard because I needed to keep it as close to 10 minutes as possible, as well as getting through all the stories and flashbacks. But we got through it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys later.